Hello, my name is Jamie Brand with 360 Yield Center. What we want to focus on a little bit today is just getting that head set up so that when you do go to the field, everything works to the best of its ability and that you're ready to go. And so there's some best practices that we focus on and we're going to be walking through those best practices today and just showing you some of the things that that need to be looked at, just need to be fine-tuned before you start utilizing this technology. So really when we look at the corn head, one of the important things is just the, the condition or the evaluation of your stock rolls. So as we start looking at this, this particular, um, right here we're going to start with the chain roll. We're going to put a different roll on here in just a minute just show you that one as well. But this corn stock's going to come in and you're going to feed about 30 to 40 of these every second. It's going to come in your gathering chain is going to be coming around right here. So this is going to basically be in the cavity or in the gathering chain until we get up and we actually get it hitched into the stock roll. And so it's important that as we, as we come back that we don't have to go back any further to be able to get a hold of it to have a clean pull. So you'll see as I turn this roll right here, it's going to cavity it and it's going to bring it in. And basically this, this, the chain roll is a processing roll, so it's just going to walk it all the way back. The thing we don't want is the front of this roll to be significantly wore out so that we have to actually get better. So looking here at another style of uh, stock roll, just as you evaluate, this is a very popular stock roll on the market. It's a uh, John Deere um, opposing roll. So what you'll see is I've got them, I've got them right here uh, to where the tightest point is is right here and as I turn it they come across so they basically pinch and then they come they open up a little bit at the bottom and then they pinch and so the one thing you'll want to see is if this is the type of roll that you're running is we tend the, the stocks tend to favor this, this this front part and so what we'll see over time is that we will get wear like this and, and wear on these rolls so what we're seeing um, with that evaluation is as that stock comes up and it connects into here it's more loose in here because we've got less, um, we've got less uh, material here to catch after a wear line and it takes it almost all the way up to here before we start getting that clean pull. And so that's just one thing you want to evaluate is just uh, really the concept is being able to come up in here, be able to grab it with the front of these uh, stock rolls and be able to, as soon as we grab it, to be able to aggressively just start to pull that down through, through the stock rolls. So one thing you want to do too is as you're looking at your corn head and getting ready for fall, um, that's an important piece is just your deck plates. So as we start looking at deck plates and, and, and just different things that go on, they're over a period of time, things can jump out of whack. And so what we've seen on this corn head is that we took the yield savers off here and this head's only ran about 20, 30 acres. And so what we'll see here is that, that the deck plate um, the pin actually jumped out of the housing and you can see how crooked that this is. And so first glance, obviously we know that something's wrong. So as you go through the growing season, just understanding your deck plates, whether you're looking at a head that's, that's nearly brand new, uh, a head that's uh, fairly early in its uh, lifespan or something that, uh, that has more age on it, just make sure that you understand exactly where your deck plates, because that's very important as far as how the head functions. So when we start looking at deck plates and deck plate settings, we want them to be slightly different for 360 yield saver over standard gathering chains. And what I mean slightly, I mean slightly. And I'm going to explain that. So if you're coming in and you're taking, say, one of your bigger stocks in your field, that's kind of how you set these. And as you come through, you're going to have, you want to have a little bit of space to be able to basically uh, gather that. And as you bring that down, just to continue to try to make that gap as, uh, big enough that you need, but, but small enough to be able to really um, get as much impact around that ear base as that you can. So what is the different setting that we want for Yield Saver? And so when we look at Yield Saver, say this is the socket that you're running right here through, we want you to open that up about, a, about 3 eighths of an inch. Um, so if you're looking at your deck plates and you're able to open them up just slightly, just slightly, for the yield saver. And the reason that we want that, because we have our brushes over here and we uh, just a little bit more gap is just gonna make for a little bit cleaner of a pull down. Now our ears will still come through the bristles and basically cushion right here and make that impact. And with all the cushioning, we have more than enough to compensate for that little bit opening of the gap and it just really helps with residue. So one thing you want to look at too is it really depends on your corn head. 
but a lot of corn heads have cast or, or steel chain guides. But there's also several corn heads out there that have poly or, or, or a material that can basically warp. And so the one thing we want to do is if we've got those chain guides that are warped, it's putting additional pressure and friction pushing the brushes together. And so we put basically a worn out, uh, worn out chain guide on this row. And what you're going to see is the bristles get very, very tight as we get up in here and especially as we get to about here where we actually hit the front of the stock roll. And so you can imagine this coming up here and we're getting tighter and because there is so much pinch right here from the warp chain guides. So when we start looking at this at the bottom, we're at about four and three quarters. As we get into here, um, we're at about four and a half. As we get up in here, we're about four and a half, four and three eighths. And then we start to widen up to five. And as we get up here, we get closer to six. So when we have warp, warp guides, you can see the, the spacing here between the tightener and, uh, and here we just put so much more friction on that coming up through the chain, up that, that residue coming up through here and beginning its descent as it starts to pull down through. So it's important to replace these, these guides if possible. So this, now what we've done is we've basically taken those warp chain guides off that you just saw a moment ago and we've, we've replaced them with not brand new chain guides but certainly much straighter. And so right here is one of the ones that we were running before that would fit right here and you can just see the bow in it that was really pushing the bristles together. It's really changed a lot. When we get these bows like this and it just shoves everything tighter, we struggle to even get our fingers down through. Now we can very easily get our fingers back through. We can imagine that corn plant just being yanked down through. We're starting right here, basically about right here on the front of the stock roll. We basically have a good pull down all the way to the back. So if we start looking a little bit at this, you know, we were well below four inches in places here. Here, we don't get below five inches. So this is going to make a big difference on how we come up through here. We capture the stock, we start to pull down, and then we create a really good cushion as that plant works up and that ear basically gets pulled off and put up into the auger. So basically, as we look at, at, at 360 Yield Saver and look at as we came up, you'll see in that slow motion video just the way it came up and got out of here and it basically cleanly pulled down. And so this is what we ended up for residue up on the top. So this is probably about 35% corn. And what we do see is with just the intactness of that, you're probably going to slightly get more residue in, but certainly not much at all. So if we look at this here and start, let's start thinking about the impact. So this basically went down through here, um, and basically this pushed all the way down and basically stripped that. So what does that mean for this ear? So as I pull this husk off, um, you're going to see actually right here, right here is where it basically made contact with the deck plate, but we cushioned that, we cushioned that. And so what does it look like from an ear standpoint? And see if we can find it here. So you'll see it right here. So right here is where it actually made contact, which is Typically, if we do not have yield saver on, we're going to see a much bigger area right here. Remember, this is 35% corn. So we're still seeing the impact. It's coming down. It's getting to the deck plate, but we've cushioned that. And basically, we, we basically made a lot less impact on the butt of that ear. And you can imagine as this thing gets drier, that impact is just going to start watching these kernels explode. So just in inclusion, when we start looking at 360 yield saver and what should be a grower's expectation? So again, just from a best practice standpoint, stock rolls uh, don't, don't need to be new. They can be worn, but they can't be worn out. We have to be able to grab that down. Another part is the deck plate setting. Just understanding in and out from the deck plates, just to understand you know, slightly more uh, width than what you would run with just standard gathering chains. If you have guides that, that have the tendency to warp, make sure that you get the clearance. We want these bristles to be able to run our fingers through, to be able to pull that stock down. Um, and, then, and then fourthly, it's just head to ground speed. So we could be bringing in as many as 30 to 40 of these stocks a second. And so we want that, that this stock to get in and get out of here so the next stock can get in and get out of here and just work itself through the process. So what we showed you today is actually about 35% corn. It's in a field that just got chopped for silage. So a lot of people ask us exactly what we should expect for residue when we're in different moisture. So you're seeing probably the worst case 
in residue that you're seeing as far as, as bringing it in. As, as we look here, this is one that we ran and we basically brought the ear leaf in and we brought just a few in the husk and just a few other leaves in with this ear. As that corn starts to dry down, uh, this shank becomes a little bit looser and then we typically will see the ear leaf fall right down through the stock rolls as well. So you'll see that as it dries down. As the corn gets significantly drier, then basically we're just seeing the chaff as, as things start to dry down and become more crisp. So the biggest and the most important thing is before you go to the field, just look at your combine, make sure you make the necessary maintenance adjustments to be able to have the best success that you can with 360 Yield Saver.